This is CouncilCast, part of the Legal Talk Network, and I'm your host, Karen Conroy. When you face a complex case outside your expertise, you bring in a co-counsel for next-level results. When you want to engage, expand, and elevate your firm, you bring in a marketing co-counsel. In this podcast, I bring in marketing experts who each answer one big question to help your firm achieve more. Here's today's guest. I'm Dave Sobel. I am the host of the Business of Tech podcast. I was a 10-year veteran of running a managed services provider for small businesses, then another 10 years working on the vendor side, selling software to those same guys. And now I spend my time helping those people think about what technology changes matter today. And I'm looking forward to this conversation. Oh, this is going to be good. Dave, thank you for being here. What technology changes matter? I feel like I'm just underlining that a little bit because... It is just a whirlwind of technology changes. So to begin, the title for the show is What Lawyers Need to Know About Website Technology. So that's kind of a broad, that's a lot. There's, you know, this is not going to be like, you know, a five hour mini series (laughs) show about website (laughs) website technology, but there's a lot of different things that are going on right now that are big changes and, you know, things that people are confused and overwhelmed by. So let's start with the big one in terms of web website and just technology in general. Let's start with AI and let's talk about what are the main things that everybody needs to know? I mean, everybody's talking about like how to do it, you know, the, all the problems, all the issues or whatever, but what's, what's the main, what would you say the top, I don't know, three things are that people need to know about AI technology and kind of related to websites and and marketing and all that good stuff. So it's kind of, it's, it's incredibly exciting for those of us in technology because it's very rare that you have these technologies that are explosive, adopted very fast, and we can see the real transformative nature. Like we can literally sort of draw the lines of, oh, the internet was one. Oh, the yeah. iPhone was one. And we're kind of doing the same thing with AI here. And so I'm going to say like there are three big things if you want to break it down. The first is the like, oh yeah, this is a thing. Like yeah. this is a thing. You're going to be impacted by it. Yes. But the second thing I'm going to say is, is technology analysts and technology people like me always say it goes faster than it actually does. Oh, so in a way, I want to I want to tell everybody that the like, yeah, it'll be OK. Like, trust yes. me, it will be OK. You have more time than you think you do because we are always wrong about how fast it goes. Oh, <laughs> I love that. That is that is really a unique <laughs> point to be made that, I mean, I have to say, I read about AI and look at all the tips and, you know, that's a, that's a unique one. And I, I feel like that's, that offers such a breath of fresh air too. Cause it's like, okay, everyone take a breath. <laughs> like, right. You can, <laughs> you can, you have time. You, you, you are going to be okay. And, and, you know, and sort of my last thought is, is that like, hey, the basic principles always still work. My father was a woodworker and I talk all the time about the idea of measure twice, cut once. Yes. Like is a foundational principle for a reason. And so yeah. if you are thoughtful about it, make thinking about it and then move. Yeah. You're going to do okay, particularly based on my second statement, that it doesn't nearly move as fast as we did. And by the way, think about all of these revolutions that we've been through, right? The yeah. internet. Right. For those of us that it came on, like I, I was playing with the internet in 1995, right? But yeah. commercially, years later before we got it all right, like a yeah. decade later till we got it all right. And by the way, we're still feeling the impact of that. Yeah. The iPhone, the same way, like, oh, launched, super exciting, revolutionary device. Yeah. yeah, those first few years, remember those apps? Remember I the do. I beer stupid app and like yeah. the fart apps and all kinds of yes. silly, like we were a lot of time figuring out what it would do. Well, by exactly. the way, AI, same thing. I love <laughs> like, that. I love that because everyone has this kind of twisted memory, especially of things like the iPhone, where it like in their memory, it is what it is today or it was what it is today. 
And it wasn't. I'll never forget the very first day the iPhone was released. Of course, I was working with someone who was like beyond early adopter. And they came over to our house and they're showing us. And at this time, I'm working corporate. So I, of course, had a BlackBerry, right? Like that was the thing, right? right? <laughs> and and that was the status symbol at the time were these Blackberries with the little mini keyboard and your thumbs and all of that. And I remember I'm standing there with my BlackBerry and and he's standing there with his iPhone. And I was like, I don't get it. I don't see it. I don't see what that thing can do that this BlackBerry can't. Like, you know, at the time, the iPhone had no, the the main kind of force and where everybody st where started kind of rubber hitting the road with the iPhone is once all the apps started getting in there and integrating <laughs> and, and interacting with each other. But in the beginning, it was like email, not great pictures. And maybe a little bit of texting, but even then it wasn't, it wasn't what it is now. So right. I and love this is that the key point. This is the yeah. key point, right? Is this, by the way, those of us in technology, we recognize these moments. We often recognize them when they're happening. And yeah. remember that, you know, they've got to, I dig into the financial motivations of technology all the time on my show. And this is where I highlight, remember all the people that are telling you how important AI is are yeah. financially motivated for it to be very important for you. Yes. Yes. So, yes. so take a moment, <laughs> like it's okay. Right. They're excited because they've built something that is going to change everybody and they want you to do it right now. And give, it, okay. give them five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's yeah. okay. Like I legitimately believe there are real use cases here. I think there are things yes. that we're going to do with it, but whether or not you did it today or in the next hour versus let actually be thoughtful about the way that we can leverage it. And by the way, right. I think people that are moving now are yeah. going to have some competitive advantage. They will sure. get, they'll embrace it. They'll move, they'll move faster. They'll see some benefits with that. But by the way, the speed doesn't have to be at light speed in order to yes. do it. Frankly, most people who are thinking about moving right now are ahead of the majority. Yes. <laughs> I love so that. It's okay. So it's yeah. okay, everybody. Now let's yeah. be thoughtful. You haven't missed the boat. You've trust me, you've totally not missed the boat. The boat's yes. still a dock. We're still loading people on the dock. <laughs> yes. And like we're getting people on the boat. And right. by the way, we haven't quite figured out where we're going on the boat yet. Yeah, so like, we're not fine. even sure if the boat is really floating. Like we don't even know if we've got the engine for the boat yet, but there's like this right. idea of a boat and people are hopefully like getting on the boat. Right. So it's okay, everybody. So now let's be thoughtful about the technology. Like, so for yes. one of the things that I've been telling both my listeners who are the IT providers helping businesses, but also business owners themselves is, look, this is a great time to think about your ethics and your, yes. ba your guidelines for the way you're going to use it. So for right. example, like I believe that you need to make sure that everything is vetted by humans before yes. it goes out. Why? Because you are ultimately responsible for that. I'm talking to right. a group of lawyers. Yes. You know, everybody remember the case where the lawyer didn't vet it and got like drubbed out by the judge. Right. You look at that and you go, common sense, buddy. You should, right. your name was on the material. You yeah. should have looked at it. Now that exactly. also means that I think there is usefulness here, right? Like right. the ability to interact with a, a generative AI tool and get data back and research back faster is going to make your life much better. Lawyers, yeah. I want you to think about an infinite paralegal that knows every case that's ever been done and can give you that reference in real time. Yeah, but that's they're also very powerful. like overly <laughs> eager. So it's like an infinite paralegal that's like too eager and you definitely need to check their work because right. there's like a huge <laughs> potential for like error and just kind of going down the wrong path. So 100%. Yeah. But by the way, wouldn't you like to have that person on your staff right. if they were exactly. infinite capacity, right? Which exactly. they are. They can take yeah. as much. It's an it's an additive thing. Microsoft yes. uses the phrase copilot to brand theirs. And I love it because the idea yes. is, is it is next to you, right. helping you out, giving you Co -pilot. guidance. Copilot. Copilot. <laughs> yes. But you are still holding the reins. You yes. are still flying the plane. And I right. want you to think about it that way. So you can give guidance to your people of, look, we are encouraging the experimental use of AI. We want you to do it in ways that make sense. And perhaps you'll make decisions about, are you allowing proprietary data to go into it? Or are you investing in systems that are confidential about that? You'll make your determination yes. about your comfort level. 100%. But I'm, I'm guiding everybody and saying, 
make sure you're reviewing its work. Right. You are still responsible for it at the end of the day. So okay, that I, should be part of your guidance. Yes, 100%. And then I want to do a follow-up here and talk for a minute about these AI checkers. And here's why. We do a lot of SEO work and we draft a lot of content and we, in our agreement, say that we use humans. And we we guarantee that. we that is our That is our agreement. We do not use AI However, we do use AI tools to verify the quality of the work. So it gives us a grade and whatever. So we recently had some clients who used this AI checker where it basically scans the work that we sent over and it came back and said, no, this is AI. And so we did this in-depth kind of investigation on the checker they used along with a whole bunch of others did a bunch of research. We're writing an, a big blog post about this that should be live by the time that we uh, post this show. And basically they're totally unreliable. That's yeah, what it comes garbage. down to. They totally they're don't, they totally, they're, they're right. totally don't work. They come back with false <laughs> negatives all the time. And that really matters to us because obviously that impacts our reputation. We're saying that we're using humans and we had this whole group of people sit down and, a human sitting next to another human draft content, submit it to a checker, and it came back as AI, you know, while right. we were physically checking this. So I just want to talk for a minute about that. Do you have experience with that? And where you were talking about how you have to check this work, you as a human need to check this work. Do not rely on AI to check AI. Right. right. It just doesn't work. And it, it, there's no magic solution. Everybody yes. wants a magic technology solution. Right. And I'm sorry, here to tell you that that's not how this works. Right. Like the AI gener the AI checkers, they're garbage. They're wasting yes. your time. And, right. and what's interesting to me is this. I really want people to think about the way they use tools and the way they get comfortable with them over time. Yeah. Spell check is essentially an AI tool. Yes. And by the way, if you've ever used that. a grammar, if you've ever used a grammar tool, I love Grammarly. Yep. Like I love yes. Grammarly. It's a, it, I use it a lot. By the way, right. it's an AI tool, everybody. It is. It's an AI, Absolutely. Like, it, and, and so think about the, are you upset by something that's been spell checked? Are you upset <laughs> by something that's been grammar checked? Yeah. Okay. You, you're probably not, but those <laughs> have been around for a little while. Yeah. This is new. I get it. It's yeah. different and scary. Yeah. But this is the next evolution of that. Now you've yes. got a, a, something that understands language and can help you and make recommendations. I don't mind saying I leverage AI all the time to Same. produce my work. Like yep. it does summarization really well. It helps me tighten things. It helps me expand a little bit. It's not always necessarily a great writer, but by the way, it's infinite and fast. So mm -hmm. it can make me work better. I right. love it as a co-author. Like I will put something into a tool and I'll say, what did I miss? And yeah. we'll come back with five points, three of which I already thought of, but maybe one is something that I legitimately missed and didn't think of that angle. You know, and that's where you can get really useful this. But yeah. ultimately, I'm responsible for the final material. Exactly. And the organization is responsible for the final material. And if you use it that way, it is the next evolution of spell check, grammar check. Yes. Now it's a writing check at another level. I mentioned the fact that we use those SEO tools. We also use Grammarly and Spellcheck. And the reason I mentioned that earlier is because that threw off those AI checkers. So because we were using Grammarly and we had a spell check obviously in there, it came back and that was what threw off the AI checker is because it could see that, you know, somehow it could see that Grammarly had touched our work. So I just mentioned that in terms of like where things are and are not right now. So don't use those AI checkers, use the human, like really like check the work yourself as a human, not, not some AI checker, but it is a great tool. Like there, you know, so there's a balance there and, but it has to include human eyes. Right. Well, I mean, by yeah. the way, good content has always required craftsmanship. Yes. And by the way, I think this revolution is going to be really good for all of us that are good at that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Know, these are tools that make those of us that are good at writing, creation, thinking, it accelerates our work. It assists our work. We are able to work, you know, and, and produce more, faster, better. Yep. And there's areas where you can use it for, it's great at summarization. It's yep. really good at providing insights from, from like, you know, 10 meetings. It's really good at documenting and transcribing and then giving you a first pass at action items and following up and all of that kind of stuff. 
that's really good at that stuff yeah. and that, that frees up time for us to work on the other things. And yes. in particular, like it's a really great first version of a research assistant, right? It yep. gives you a lot of really insights. I'll give you one from outside the law space, but I think it's really fascinating. Yeah. They've been doing tests in ER rooms, you know, in the ER to help emergency medical technicians with first diagnosis. And what they found is, is that they had actually used generative AI tools to where they put in the symptoms and in 97% of cases in this particular study, the problem that the patient was facing was in the five generated answers 97% oh of the time. Amazing. So wouldn't you, wouldn't you want a tool that gives doctors like, Hey, we've done a first pass at it. Check these five things first. Right. Like, right. That sounds amazing. We're <laughs> right? saving like, time. This is in the ER when time is essential here. And we're not saying prescribe these medications based on like this, you know, chat GPT giving me a diagnosis. It's, Hey, check these five things first. It could be one of these five things. Check these really, you know, go yep. through these really quickly. Hey, yep. 97% hit rate, that saves lives. Yes. <laughs> like that. And that's the way I want people to think about it is, is in terms of this, like it's helping narrow the field. It's able to do analysis you can't do. It's able to provide those insights, but you're still using it. You're the yes. one making the determination. It's just narrowing the field or giving you a starting place. Okay, so we're kind of transitioning from AI into how you can use it practically. And I know that your audience usually is IT service providers. And so we're going to transition into that world and how that kind of plays out. And also a lot of firms that we work with also have IT service providers. So we're going to talk about that in a second. But first, we're going to take a quick break. Okay, we are here with Dave Sobel, and we are talking about IT, technology, websites, marketing, all that good stuff. We spent a good few minutes talking about AI specifically, because that's just like what everybody's talking about right now. <laughs> but let's talk about IT service providers. We work with a lot of IT service providers at some point in our marketing projects, and Let's talk about kind of how this all plays out and, and what the big topics are that you guys are, are talking about right now in, in the world of technology. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of discussion in that world about understanding what works, what doesn't, how to run a really good business. There's a lot of fundamental conversations that happen in there. We're always looking for the new service opportunities. But the other thing that's really been happening in that space is a realization that we we really are becoming much more important as business partners yeah. than than just the people that fix the printer, right? right. <laughs> like they, that that yes. technology, that, that a true investment with an IT service provider is one where it's much more collaborative and where we can actually be measured based on business outcomes. Yeah. I'll give you a little bit of insight. I, I tell my listeners that, that I have a, a model I call the good, better, best model of okay. measuring how good a provider is working with their customers. We know technology is important, but we've yeah. got to link this out back to your profit and loss statement. We're all right. businesses. We got to we got to link it back to business. Right. Good is when I know you're managing things in the expense line items. You know, so you're you're down in, you know, administrative costs, you're right next to the rent and you're right next to, you know, the yeah. keeping the lights on, electricity, right. all of the stuff yeah. at the Plumbing. bottom of somebody's P&L. Right. We got to yeah. have that stuff, right? Yeah. That's that's good, right? You, you got to do that stuff. It's good. Right. But if a technology provider can work with you as a customer and can make a difference in your cost of goods sold, yes. that's better. And we, yes. can, we should be able to measure it right against P&L. We should be able to show gains of efficiency, savings in the goods are sold, like directly related to how you bill your customers and yes. make money. And if that's a better model and we can, we can, we should always be able to link technology investments back to that. Yeah. And the best version of it is, is where we can directly tie it back to revenue. If okay. I can show you for every dollar that you spend in technology, you're going to buck 25 back. Yes. You'll spend money till you're blue in the face. Right? Like, okay. So this is a, this is genius. And I feel like this is the missing piece when I talk to most technology providers, to be honest, they are mm -hmm. down there in that bottom good section. And basically they just show up when somebody needs a new email address or when I need some DNS settings on the website. But even the firm, when I talk to them about like, well, okay, what do these guys do for you? And how is this helping out? And how can we make this? Because it really should be a conversation 
kind of this triangle between the technology, the website, that it should all, and the marketing and the firm, and we should all be working together. So give me an example of how you can be at that best category and kind of implement some kind of systems that really are tied to revenue. Well, it requires your provider to have insights into your business. They, 100%. They, they need to be working with you and they need to have, they're going to have some business speaking people sure. on their staff, business analysts, technologists that understand it. By the way, somebody like me, right? Like, that's, yeah. like literally people that understand both the technology and invest in learning your business. And I will, you know, this is my counsel to, to anybody on, you know, the customer side, you, you as law, law firms, the people working with law firms, like you're the customer, right? right? And let me, let me observe that. It is very, I get it. It's very hard for you to look at IT services companies, managed services firms, and tell the difference between really good ones right. that are delivering at the top level and the ones that are just, just good, right? Average. Just doing yeah. the basics. I get it. This is really hard. And I want to acknowledge that as somebody yeah. on the industry side, we talk about this all the time. I quip constantly to my listeners that the people that cut my hair are more licensed than the people that run the networks. <laughs> That's scary. That's <laughs> it's so scary, scary, right? Like yes. it's really scary. Yes. But it's true, right? You 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 don't need to have advanced degrees. It's not like going to law school. It's not yes. like going to to medical school. Like it's not those. It yeah. looks a little bit more like some of the tax trades or or sure. service industries. There are certifications you can look for. It's not perfect, right? Yeah. That, but you you should be able to ask questions about their certifications, which vendors they work with, what they're certified with. And you should be able to ask them targeted questions about the way they interact with the customer, how often they review budgets with you, how often they come out and they sit down and do planning with you. You yeah. should be able to ask them about your industry and get a sense of what their understanding is. If they've worked These with other firms. Looking... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And this is the things you're looking for to get a really great partner. Okay. So give me an example of something like a specific type of system or or kind of program or whatever the case might be that this best level IT service provider could integrate with a law firm where you instantly can see like either money savings or money generating. So anybody who's familiar with your case management tools yes. that can actually help you, you know, not only help make sure that it's running, but yes. understand how can we train your staff? How can we make sure that we've onboarded new people to use the case management software correctly yep. and that we get the most efficiently? Can we fine tune the workflows oh to make gosh. sure that it's managed? Right. Yes. <laughs> These, no, this but is... you, I mean, I can't tell you the number of firms that say, okay, we have Clio, which is kind of like the big legal world's case management system, but you know, they have lots of things you can plug in to make it more like a whole law firm management system or some other thing like that. And they're like, but we're not using it because we don't, I don't get it. I don't know how to set it up. It seems overwhelming. I'm busy all day, like just with my, my cases and doing the daily work and all that stuff. So it's there and I'm using probably 2% of it. Yep. And that's the area to yes. care about, right? That's I the area to care And that's super advanced because by the way, we can even do things at a more basic level. You might even sure. say you're, you're running your shop on Microsoft 365, right? You've got yeah. your email, calendaring teams. We can do basic workflow at that level too, that can make your people more connected, more efficient, yes. sharing information asynchronously. Like we can make your time a little bit better. Yeah. You know, like all of that, that's another area that we could spend time on working that generally is universal to most businesses. Yeah. The really great ones are the ones that are getting into like Clio, as you talked about. But by the way, there's nothing wrong with working on making sure that we're tying your information systems correctly, just in the micro at the Microsoft level, or say oh your Google workspace. Like these are the areas where you can really get some real incredible efficiencies out of it, making sure that information is available to the right people. Yes. So I recently, we, in our agency, we use ClickUp because okay. it's really robust and you can tie in a, a million different things with it. But when I first switched over to ClickUp, I realized even as someone who considers themselves very tech savvy, I was in over my head. So I found this amazing group. Not only that, like 
I figured there's some, there's people out there that know this better than I do. Why do I need to waste my time and energy figuring things out when it's, that's not efficient. That's not the most effective way of doing things. So I found this amazing group of women in England and they probably spent more than six months, probably eight months or so. And they went through every system in my entire business from sales to within a project to internal systems that we have for everything to the follow-up to everything. And they created systems that save so much time. There's moments in my day where I'm like, what am I forgetting? <laughs> because like, <laughs> I feel right? almost worrisome that they've saved so much time. And it's 100% tied to a savings of money for sure. But also just for our agency, and this is the same for law firms, when clients get into the middle of a project, oftentimes it's not something that they're comfortable or familiar with. And so mm -hmm. to have things not running smoothly really instantly creates issues and concern and worry and stress. And so to have a system in place that supports and reassures your client gives you a better client experience. And in the end, they're more likely to come back and work with you again. So I just can't, I can't underline this enough in terms of having your systems in place. And you probably aren't the right person for that. You need an outside person to take that view and be able to kind of walk you through, okay, I feel like there may be a gap here and kind of have that sounding board. Well, let me laugh and go like, we're talking to a group of lawyers. Right. Do you recommend to your clients that they should be their own lawyer? A hundred percent. Then why are you possibly recommending that you should be your own technology support? Like right. come, like you take your own advice, everybody fit. Yes. Stick, you want to do the thing that you are great at and you, and yeah. then you leverage experts around you to be yep. better at the other stuff. And you should have an expectation that the provider that's working with you is delivering at that level. There yes. are providers that do that at all sizes. They go all the way down to, and if you're a small company, midsize organization, large, large firm, there is a provider that matches to you. And particularly yeah. as we can work now remotely and internationally so easily, you don't necessarily have to only look in just your locale. You yeah. can look nationwide or you can look even internationally if you need as well. Okay. So before we get to the book, book review, I do want to briefly touch on, I think... I'm guessing, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I feel like security issues, malware, hacking, all of that stuff, is that the first thing people usually talk to you about? You know, it is, it really is. And I smile yeah. and I go, I did not get into technology to defend <laughs> against criminals. Like I yeah. really didn't. Like, <laughs> like I just didn't. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, and it, it it's it's one of those areas where it's it's super important to talk about cybersecurity, right? Because 100%. it is such an incredible threat. And I I want listeners to really understand that this is not some kid in the basement messing around. Right. I yes. want you to think Tony Soprano with yeah. a computer. Yeah. It is an organized crime syndicate that is funded, you know, funded by governments, funded right. by foreign governments right. that is entirely designed to steal your money. What yes. do you, everyone always tells me, oh, I don't have anything that you could, that you could take. Actually, I hear you that do. All the time it's too. your money. Yes. It's your money. They yes. want your money and they're really good at it. They're really good at breaking into your business. Take, they, we call it ransomware for a reason. Yes. They are trying to take you ransom and make yep. you pay them money to get released. Okay. It's so let's talk threat. about like <laughs> threats in terms of, first of all, let's back up just real quick. I don't want to spend a super huge amount of time on this because I feel like in terms of your whole breadth of technology and all of that security is just one little slice of that pie. And so I, I want to give it like the appropriate amount of, of time, but let's talk first about what the question that I get all the time is, I think my website was hacked. Why are they doing that to my website? Yeah, they have, you have money and they'd like you to give them some. It's kind of that's, I mean, it really is that simple. They've systemized <laughs> the whole process, right? Because, I mean, they, they have built an incredibly robust automated system that targets the entire internet and looks yeah. for people that they can get into. And they just systemize the whole thing. The, think about, I want you to think about it in physical terms, like right, for a okay. moment, like think about if we were actually, if we and I were burglars, right? We would be right. scoping houses, right? We would look for houses and we would figure out the ones that have locks that we can wiggle and that we might yeah. be able to get into. Now imagine if we could do, we didn't have to do it one at a time. 
we could just blanket everything in an automated process and quickly identify the ones. Oh, and have little robots just do it for us. Right. We'd be really great thieves. Like, yeah. like we'd be we'd be systemized themes. That's what they're looking for. They're looking right. for the basics of, did you lock, if you didn't lock the doors, they're going to get in. You left a window open. You, and this is the idea of like patching the software and keeping right. things up to date and all of right. the basics. And well, that anytime, was my next question. Like, so what do you usually say when people ask you, like, what should I do? Okay. What I tell people to do, my advice is actually a little different than most people's. You probably heard it from the way that I talk about technology. Yeah. I want you to think about the information in your business as the crown jewels. Okay. It is literally the one thing from a technology perspective I cannot protect. I don't really care about your computers themselves, the desktops, the phones. That's all just stuff. Yeah. And a little bit of time and money can replace that. But the one thing that no technology can create for you is the knowledge contained within your business. That's yeah. your data. That is your, your core information, your case management system, the cases themselves, your billing system, the records of your customers. I cannot put that back together. If yeah. they get it, it's over. And I want you to think, think about how much time you've put into building it. Now take a moment to think maybe, just maybe, I should take a little effort to protect it. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I want you every single day, think about your business as the information that is that is contained within it. And what am I going to do to protect it? And by the way, it's not that hard. Okay. The first, <laughs> like the but 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 by the way, because everyone I laugh like, because it's so true. <laughs> it's totally true. I want you to have good backups and I want yes. you to test them. Right. Yes. Because by the way, if something happens, what you want to do is be able to tell the criminals, F off, I'm not right. paying. I you don't care. Because yeah. I have backups and yes. they're good. Yeah. And all I had to do, by the way, might be a little painful. It might take a day or two to put the business back together, but F you, I'm not giving you a penny. Right. right. That yeah. needs to be the way you think about it. And you've yep. done the bit to protect your data. The yes. second thing is, is remember that by the way, people are a problem. People are just, your employees are going to make a mistake. Yep. You have to be perfect 100% of the time. The hackers only have to get in once. Yes. Recognize that it will happen, but yep. let's make it a little harder. Two-factor authentication. I get it, everybody. You all hate it. But you know what you also do? Put locks on your doors of your car and your home. Right. I don't understand why you would not put a lock on your data. And by yes. the way, this exception for senior managers, they're the most important people. <laughs> Like, seriously, they're the ones with access to the most data. Why would you exempt them <laughs> from the putting value. a lock yeah. on things? Right. right. Like, yeah. like this, I, and we laugh about it in IT. Yeah. Literally, when a customer comes in and goes, oh, I totally want two-factor authentication, but not for VP and above. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, because, because Bob, he, you know, he gets a little rustly. <laughs> right. Like, it, yeah. it's like, seriously, you know what? Let's not put locks on the really nice cars in the parking lot. Let's only put car locks on the ones that are <laughs> The cheap ones. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, like, and it's, it's kind of that. And then, by the way, the third little pillar is you've got to invest in keeping your software up to date. Yes. It just yeah. is the piece that goes along with it. This is an, it's a maintenance effort. You take your car in for oil changes. You, you go in for your yearly checkup. You've got to maintain your systems. That's part yes. of the cost of ownership. And by the way, if you do those three things, you will vastly minimize the out, the impact of any kind of security incident. It's kind of that simple. Okay. The last thing I want to underline that, that I want to reinforce is the way you phrase that last part. If you do those three things, you'll, you'll minimize the impact. So you didn't say you will never get hacked. You will never have malware. They will never get in and create problems. You kind of implied that basically what we were talking about before we started recording, pretty much everyone's going to get hacked. And what the question, sort of the very kind of pointed question that I wanted to ask is, is it a, the fault of anyone in specific if and when you get hacked? Okay. So, so this is, I love this question. I totally love this question because first off, for those of us that actually spend any moments thinking about security, we always talk about it is a matter of when, not yes. if. Yes. In fact, I've, I have quipped with several of my, that, you know, one of the really great ways you could manage this is just put aside some money 
to yep. cover the downtime for when you go down and know you're yes. ready to go. Like right. you literally just, that's a really good technique is I just know yeah. this is my rainy day fund. I'm going to get hacked. My job is just sort of make sure I don't get hacked much. Now, what I want to do is, is there's a difference between, you know, blatant disregard for security protocols right. and normal right. human behavior. Sure. I want you to acknowledge that humans are fallible. They're probably going to click on a link. It yep. might happen. Yeah. What I want you to do is I want to make sure that you haven't been turned such a blind eye to it that you haven't didn't even bother to train them or yeah. think about what might be bad or do security awareness or do the basics, by the way, of like putting locks on doors or like two factor <laughs> authentication. Right? right. Like I, I want I don't want there to be an exemption for it. By the way, there is a group, an area that is just blatant disregard. And if you think about it, if you talk to an insurer, they're not going to cover you. Yeah. Because you didn't do your due diligence. Right. Well, and that's the case in any kind of insurance, <laughs> like whether you were talking about technology or just like car insurance, if if you like, you know, if, if you are at fault and they can prove that there you are not going to be covered by your insurance provider like that's, right, that's exactly. how it works. So, yeah. But I want I want to I want to acknowledge that, by the way, there are a lot of businesses that when I, if we were to go to get cyber insurance, they would not cover you because you have not even done the basics. I yeah, see this sure. all the time. So I yeah. want to acknowledge like there's a lot of people that aren't even covering the basics that, group yeah. that like won't put two factor authentication on the VPs. Right. Yeah, you're yeah. not going to get covered. <laughs> But I also, yeah. I also then want to say, yeah, it's going to happen, everybody. Yep. We're not looking for blame. What we're doing is we're looking for good response. Yes. Like we're, good, we're making sure that we're well prepared for the thing that is going to happen. Yeah. Right. We're doing our best to minimize it. We're trying to make sure that it doesn't happen. We're trying to minimize our chances. Yep. But when it, when it does happen, we know what to do. Yep. We have a plan. We've reacted to it. It's not that necessarily that big a deal, right? You right. Can pull your, if you if you are prepared, like for anything, and we just restore from backup. We, exactly. we make sure the backups were, were well maintained. We have a little bit of downtime. It is painful. We're yeah. trying to make sure that we're not getting complete. You know, like our information. The big worry these days is that they're getting smarter. They're getting into extortion right. versus just yeah. ransom. Yeah. So like the risks go up, but yeah. we also have to know that we're prepared. Like we need to be prepared to tell them, no, we're not paying you. And we exactly. are prepared. Like if you think about an extortion scenario, you've thought about it. Like you've right. said, like, we're prepared to notify our customers. We understand the disclosure po possibilities. We've only collected the data that's minimal. Like we haven't collected everything. We've made sure that it's, you know, that it's as small as possible. You want to do the smart things to be ready, but no, don't you don't blame your people. You've right. got to make sure you just know this is going to happen. Exactly. We support a lot of websites and it, I mean, they get hacked all the time. It happens all, all the time. time. We, <laughs> but we do have the systems in place, but regularly one of the first questions is like, why, why did our support kind of fail? And it's like, well, that's not the right place to start. We're going to assume you're not special that you're going to somehow avoid all of these issues. I mean, if the government and major organizations that have so much more security can be hacked, then I'm afraid your little website can be hacked as well. Right, it's going so, to happen. It's about yeah. response. Like you exactly. just described it. Like, oh, we got you. Like we cleaned it up. We backed it up. Yep. The downtime exactly. was measured. We had a plan for it. We put it all back together. Yeah, that's called normal response, everybody. Exactly. That's exactly. what we look for. <laughs> and yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's and that's what to expect. The expectation that you'll never be hacked is not a. That's not. A, a normal expectation like that's just unreasonable plus it's going to put you in this kind of kind of false sense of security place where that's not a good great idea either okay so it is time for the book review we have a whole library of books curated on our website called the thought leaders library which is kind of a new title so we're excited about that <laughs> and so we're going to talk to dave about the book that he's recommending for the library after the break all right, it is time for the book review. Dave, what is the book that you have to recommend for the Thought Leaders Library to add to our collection today? So I'm going to recommend Flash Foresight by Daniel Burris. And it's one of my favorite business books that talks about doing trend analysis. Oh, this is cool. Like, <laughs> I love this kind of coming full circle back to the beginning of the show when we were talking about AI. You can appreciate I'm a guy who spends a lot of time trying to figure out what's a thing, what's not a thing. Yes. And this book has been one of the most instrumental tools that I use in my thinking for this. Oh, and I I'll love give you a little this give you a little insight into the one of the, the key takeaways for me was the differentiation between hard trends and soft trends. Okay. So what's that? 
let me tell you what that means. So hard trends are those things that we know are going to absolutely happen. My okay. favorite technology ones are things like there will be a faster processor. There yes. will be better li battery life. We will improve. Things will get smaller, right? Okay. For example, I can tell you for sure, Apple will put out a new iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> I know for sure that it will happen. This yes. is a guaranteed hard trend. I also yes. know certain things about it. I know it will be faster, smaller, we'll better probably, battery, we'll contain, like better battery, like you know, yeah. Yeah, better battery. Yeah. Like, there are things that I know for sure yeah. in technology and for, particularly in technology, we're always talking about like, oh, you don't know what's going to happen. No, I totally well, we know do. what's going to yeah. happen. <laughs> I totally know what's going to happen. Yeah. There's a whole yeah. bunch of things that I can completely predict are going to happen. Those are called hard trends. Okay. Soft trends are the areas where we are unable to do it because it is difficult to do. Like consumer sentiment might go up and we cannot control that. Political yeah. outcomes. I can't sure. predict those kinds of things. Yeah. But if I look for hard trends in, the, in my analysis, I can actually know far more than I think I, you might be able to get into. And you can really do very good planning by focusing focusing just on these hard trends. Oh, interesting. Okay. So are there hard trends that you're looking at already for AI? So in like, I'll give you the, the fun example in, in kind of AI and, and also in spatial computing. So like, by the okay. way, we're, ta we're talking right around the time Apple has launched their vision pro. Okay. Right. And, and a lot of us, and I'm, I'm one of them I'm looking, going like, okay, is this a thing? Is this a, yeah. a technology trend that I'm interested in? And I can look at it and say, okay, I don't necessarily want to analyze the existing device. I want to analyze where this might go. And to those hard trends, I know I know it will get smaller. I know its battery life will get better. I know that the parts in it will get cheaper. Yeah. And it can and they can and they can miniaturize it. So if I think about that, it's like, oh wait a second, there might actually be something here. I can envision a device that is inevitable yes. that would be smaller, cheaper, faster, with better battery life. Now, do the use cases that they're talking about make sense to me? And I'm interested like in the idea of like the, the idea of expanding your, your workspace. One yeah. of the ideas is that really interests me is this idea of, can you put on like, you know, a goggles thing and get infinite desktop space that might be really useful in <laughs> limited space, remote work, remote workers. Like imagine if you could just have 51 inch monitors all around. I was you. picturing like hundreds of Excel spreadsheets going off into like the infinite <laughs> space. I'm There's like, probably uh... some finance people that would be so excited by that. Right? That like... just made me a little nauseous. <laughs> But, ima but imagine if you weren't limited by the space. That's yeah. the, that's the, and it's like, oh, wait a second. There's a use that's case cool. there. Yes. Right. So yeah. AI, same kind of thing. We know yeah. the models will get, they will, there will be a smarter one. Of it course. Will reduce, it will, it will have more data. It will reduce hallucinations. It, will it already cheap. is. I mean, like just going from right. chat GPT 3.5 to four has four. been significantly, you know, noticeably different and improved. Hard trend. Hard yes. trend. We know there will be a better version that will be yep. faster. It will be cheaper. It's not going to stop at four. Frame. <laughs> right. We're not going to stop at four. So can we envision a version of that that solves the problems we're thinking about? Yes, we can. 100%. It's a hard yeah. trend. I can bet on certain portions of that. Yes. And that's how you use this analysis method to make sure that you're focusing on the hard trends that you can yeah. depend on versus the soft ones that you can't. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. We will link to that book. We have the, the, the library, but also on the show page, we'll have the link to the book and the summary and the link over to Amazon. That sounds fascinating just because, you know, I was going to say in this moment, but it seems like there's always a moment, like a, whatever the thing is, <laughs> you know, there's it's always so something true. going on. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. So Dave, what's one thing that you know that works? That's such a great question. And I, and I'm, <laughs> You know, and I'm going to, I'm going to go in a really unexpected way for a technologist. Oh, okay. Um, people work. And what I mean by that is small investments in people always pay off. That, well, <laughs> that and that comes full, full, once again, full circle back to the AI thing where we just kept hammering this idea that you have to have a human person check it all. Like not, don't use those AI checkers. Don't use, you know, don't assume that it's good because you kind of glanced through it, you know people mm -hmm. you need a person yeah. yeah but but 
you get the benefit when you do small investments over long periods of time. Those those check ins with friends and colleagues, those yes. small moments like to take the extra time, the extra three minutes at the beginning of a call to ask how they're doing yeah. or to, like 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 those small investments. They always work. They yes. always work. And it, over time, so it pays off. And yes. so like it for me, that more than anything is the one thing when you say what always works. Yeah, that always works. It, it it does. And it's kind of funny that we're talking about technology and you're basically saying you kind of pull apart the curtains of technology and just go human to human. Well, these are these are tools. Yeah, like, these are all tools yeah. to make life better, <laughs> like yeah. broad speaking life better. Yeah. So the more we think about them as that, the better and more effective we are with them as tools. And yes. I just I think that that is a fundamental like I love it. Like I'm a gadget guy. I love playing with all this stuff, but I do it. Because I want to, like, there's a fun element, right? Which is a human emotion, which is about making me a better person. Like, I'm yeah. having a good time doing it. Or it's by, you know, enhancing the outcomes because I want to make people better or businesses better. Like, the more you tie it back to that, it always works. It does. It's so true. And I think that's important to, that, like, these are these are tools and this is supporting a better life. This is not, like, meant to be the better life, like living inside this virtual reality thing. Like that's where it kind of crosses the line for me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, I'm, I want the people, the like real people, <laughs> but awesome. All right, Dave Sobel, thank you so much for being here. This was such a, we covered a lot. There was a lot of good stuff, different kinds of technology, what's happening in technology, AI, hacking, malware, but also like how to find and, and work with a great IT service provider. That alone was worth the whole episode, like <laughs> sitting in and like getting those tips for how to make that tied to your revenue. That is so such valuable, helpful information. So thanks so much for being here. Well, I appreciate the time. This has been great fun and thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to this episode of the CouncilCast podcast. Be sure to visit our website at council-cast.com for the resources mentioned on the episode and to give us your feedback. If you enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate if you could rate and review the podcast on Apple and subscribe to your favorite podcast platform. See you on the next one.